Oh, you weren't talking. Um, so again, in this one, guys, we have quotient rule, whatever else. We can't do anything in this case, right? So there's a couple things I want to remember from your pre-calculus days as far as trig um, trigonometry. One of the things you guys can remember is whenever you guys have something like this, a lot of times we want to try to like rework this where it kind of can make sense for us. So one thing I can do here is let's just break apart this cosine. Remember, cosine squared, guys, just means cosine of t times cosine of t, right? But this helps me because if I want to find the antiderivative, I know I don't have the an or the integral here. I don't have the integral of anything going on, right? And there's nothing the sine over cosine squared t. However, when by looking at my product, I know that if I can, I can have the product, right, of tangent times secant. That is one, and like cosecant times tan or cosecant times cotangent. That's another one, right? So can I group these as like a term by another term? Well, yes, I can. Sorry, dt. If I group these two, if I rewrite this as sine of t over cosine of t times 1 over cosine of t d of t. Now, I'm, I'm showing you guys a lot of work, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing. Because otherwise, I, can, I mean, I could just, you could just go from here to the next step if you want to. But I'm showing you guys where this comes from. You're grouping these together. Sine over cosine is equal to tangent of t. 1 over cosine is equal to secant of t. And now you guys have something that we can find the uh, antiderivative of, which is, or the integral of, which is secant. Do you guys kind of see how we're using this manipulation, though? Yes, no? OK. So I'm telling you, there are going to be some problems on your quiz next class period that is going to be very obvious. It's going to be 